welcome back to Krista's Kitchen. So as y'all have seen with some of my other videos, we've had those spaghetti squash hanging out over here that I haven't really done anything with and before they went bad, I wanted to look up something to do with them. Unfortunately, one of them already went bad, so we missed out on that one. But instead of the typical butter, olive oil, some seasoning, or even a red sauce, I wanted to look for something a little bit different. So I went online and started looking around and I found this uh, garlic, cheesy garlic spaghetti squash recipe. So we're gonna try it out together. Now, I did go ahead and pour my heavy cream, expecting that I would have three spaghetti squash and I only have two, so we may have some extra liquid. But I still, I doubled the liquid recipe to go in it, at least in my mind. So we're gonna start with that. So the first thing I did is took our spaghetti squash and I just cut them in half and scraped out the seeds in the inside. Now this one, it had the top, like the little root or whatever that thingy is, and it was getting on my nerves. So I chopped that off the top of that one too. But we have those here. We have the oven preheating to 400, and we're gonna get mixed, um, mixed together what's gonna go down in these. Before we mix this, I don't want these to get knocked over and spill, so I'm gonna just ball up some aluminum foil pretty much and put underneath them so that they don't rock and move in the oven. So I'm just kind of crumple it up, and this, I know this is silly, but it kind of just holds them steel, so whatever you put in it, look, they won't move. So we're gonna make four of those little things and then get mixed in. But when it, we're at the end of squash season, so uh, there might not be too many that are looking the greatest right now, but I wanted to use them up. I don't like to waste anything. And I'm a little bit sad that the other one was already ruined. But it gives us another idea when it comes um, for fall vegetables and fruits everything anyway. Oven's preheated. Another option if we like it. And it's very simple ingredients and it's not a lot of work to it at all. All the work really is happening in the oven. So we've got our four little bases and you don't really have to do this but again since we're putting liquid in it I wanted something so they're not rocking all over the place. Like I'm getting all the little strings on you. So in our bowl, I have two cups of half and half. Now, if you're only doing one, I would really cut this down by half. Um, again, I doubled it because I was planning on filling three medium ones, but I only have two. So everything in this will be doubled, but you can cut it down. So we have two cups of half and half. We're on a boil advisory, so I'm using bottled water. And I'm gonna add a cup of bottled water to it. So we should have three cups of liquid total. To this, I'm going to add about a tablespoon, probably a little bit less um, of dry thyme because this stuff is pretty potent, so I don't want to overdo it. There we go, about three quarters of a tablespoon. I want the flavor and the seasoning to really get in there, especially with Spaghetti squash, it doesn't have a whole lot of flavor on its own, but I still don't want to overdo it. I'm going to add in, and I wrote myself a note, two tablespoons of this minced garlic. Get some of those juices in there. And yes, I know this isn't a real tablespoon, but for things like this, I don't mind it being off a little bit. And I have chicken base. This is my preference for chicken bouillon, but if you have chicken bouillon, use that. If you have chicken broth in a can, substitute that instead of your water in here. That way you get the flavor. But one of the reasons I like this recipe and I gravitated towards it is there's no initial salt added to it. It lets the ingredients add the salt, so the cheeses, um, the chicken base, things like that but I'm going to add the equivalent to two bouillon cubes of chicken base to this. Like I said, use what you have. I just, I love my chicken base. It has so much flavor. Plus, I have it in the fridge and always readily available. So I'm just gonna dissolve that a little bit. 
If you have the chicken bouillon cubes, you'll probably have to work a little bit more to dissolve it, like crush it up or something. But I'm going to let that sit in there and dissolve and show y'all what else is going in here. So I have a bag of the Italian style cheese. This has got those four different cheeses in it. You can use any brand you like. This is just the off brand, the store brand for this. But I bought some Havarti cheese not long ago just because I wanted to use it, but haven't really had anything to use it for. So I'm gonna slice up a little bit of this Havarti cheese and put in there also to give it some richness and that creaminess. And no, I'm not gonna shred it. I'm just gonna chop up some pieces and let it, let the cheese do the work melting in there for me. And I know I shouldn't use my knife to cut through plastic, but this is realism in this kitchen. <laughs> but Havarti is a very rich, like creamy cheese and it's supposed to be like amazing in grilled cheeses. I've never had it in a grilled cheese, but I figured this would be something perfect for it. And we can just add it to that Italian cheese. This recipe only calls for two cups of cheese. Uh, listen, I said only two cups <laughs> for the whole thing, but I'm adding a little bit with this. So I'm just gonna put this down in the bottom of here. There we go. Let me see if I can get this. I may have to get my whisk out. Just want to break up that chicken base that's down in the bottom of this. Get it all mixed around. I am worried if this is going to be way too much liquid going down into these spaghetti squash. Again, I was planning on it being the three. So I'll keep giving myself the benefit of the doubt with that. All right, let me get a little whisk. All right, much better. So we're just gonna pour this over. And I know it says add the cheese into here, but I'm afraid of it clumping up. So I'm gonna pour most of the cheese down into the base like I did with this one and just pour my liquid over top. Because to me, that just, that makes more sense than having it all mixed in there. And plus, I might not even end up being able to use all of that liquid. So I hate to waste my cheese down in it. We may not, again, use all this cheese either. I mean, we can always use all of the cheese. since we have increased the measurements. All right, moment of truth. Let's see how big of a mess I make. We'll start all the way over here. Yummy. And make sure you have this in a pan that when it boils over just a little bit, it's not gonna mess up your whole oven. See, I need to tilt this one back just a little to get it a little more flat than this one, too. There's actually not as much of this left over as I thought, but I do see in the bottom of this I have all my garlic and my goodies. So I'm going to spread that out in there. We still have a pretty good bit down here. Maybe we'll have a garlic milkshake later or something. All right, so these are going to go in the oven just like this at 400 for about 40 to 50 minutes. 
We'll keep an eye on them and see how they're doing, see if we need to add any liquid. It didn't say to add liquid throughout. I'm, I'm expecting that they'll absorb it into it. It'll get nice and creamy and really stick to it. It's hard to tell because the picture that I saw for the recipe, they had already like scooped everything out and plated it and everything. So I'm not sure how it'll look coming straight out of the oven, but we're going to find out. Um, all right, 440 to 50 minutes, and we'll see y'all back soon. Bye. We did 45 minutes in the oven. They've been sitting out for about five, 10 minutes, just cooling down a little bit. Um, I did expect that some of the liquid, some more of it would absorb because if you look, it's still, they're completely full. So yes, I have my Christmas baking dish, but I kind of think I know why they didn't show this part in the picture that they just poured it straight. Like the picture they had online was of it already in a dish. but. I pulled out some extra cheese and I grabbed some pepper. I'm going to turn these over on the side very gently and scrape them out and mix it all together and see how it tastes, see how it came out. But I grabbed this dish instead of just a serving dish in case it's not all the way cooked on the inside. I can cook it a little bit longer and just pop this in the back of the oven. Not a big deal. So we're going to pour it, pull it over to the side. Now I'm, I'm nervous, <laughs> y'all. You'll see I'm stalling because they are super hot. But I'm so glad I put those little um, aluminum foil bugs underneath it. Oh yeah, so that's peeling away pretty gently. Ooh, but still very, well, I say that. That part that was really in the center was peeling. So with spaghetti squash though, if you go with the length of the squash, it's going to string out like this, like, um, like spaghetti. And it should come out really easily. This up here at the top isn't, but I'm not going to pull on it too much because I don't want it the raw spot. I just want what's cooked. And it wouldn't be raw, it would just be undercooked. But before you pull it out of the oven, if you want, just kind of poke your fork through the outside of the spaghetti squash. And if it goes through easily, it's usually a pretty good indicator that it's done. Because spaghetti squash are pretty tough in general. I'm going to try and get as much of this as I can without getting that outside. I don't want to lose any of that, but I may end up having to because it's burning my fingers. on the green and just keep on going. Mm. If you have any of those like heat glove things and you think, oh, I've never used those. This is when you could use them. <laughs> let them finish cooling down because my fingertips are on fire. So I'm going to just kind of scrape them while they're over here like this and see if this helps. Okay y'all, so you can see we got quite a bit of spaghetti squash out of those two squash or those four halves. However, when I licked my finger and tasted a little bite of it, the squash is still pretty al dente. So if you like your squash that way, perfect. It's ready to go, all of that. But we like ours a little bit softer, so I'm just mixing them around in this um, 
this cream that it's still in and all of the cheeses. I'm going to top it with a little bit more cheese and some pepper and put it back in the oven for probably about 15, 20 minutes. Like when I say it's al dente, it's al dente. It's not, it's not soft. Now I can taste that it, the thyme is amazing in this. Like it, it flavored it so well, but we still have a pretty good bit of cooking time. So I'm going to kind of make this into a spaghetti squash little casserole like thing on here and pop it back in the oven. Now remember we're at 400. I'm going to go for about another 15, 20 minutes and more cheese is always better. So I'm going to add some more cheese to the top of it and get this bad boy back in the oven and finish cooking and go from there. But boy, does this smell good. And I'm excited. Like, if you like your spaghetti squash a little more on the firm side, then it was probably ready at this 45 minute mark that we had here. But like I said, we like our softer, so we're gonna go a little bit longer. So I'll see y'all back in about 15, 20 minutes, hopefully. All right, y'all, so our spaghetti squash is all out of the oven. It's still got quite a bit of liquid, but I'm hoping once we let it sit and cool down just a little bit, it's gonna absorb even more of that. So I put it in for another 20 minutes. You see I added some cheese, so it's creamy. And you can see it's piping hot still. But I do wanna taste test it and let y'all know how it tastes, if I think it needed any more seasoning or it's got too much seasoning, anything like that. But I'm excited. It'll probably, uh, if we have to do this in the future, it'll probably be like this again to get some more of that flavor into it and be able to cook it a little bit longer. Or I may just end up going like an hour and 15 minutes for the other, for the um, squashes themselves. But let's give it a taste test and hope I don't scald my mouth. It's really good actually. Um, it still needs just a little bit longer to cook. I don't know if because mine are some older squash that they're not absorbing the liquid as well or what is, they've still got quite a bit of crunch or if when you overcook them does it get like crunchier. I don't know. But it's still got a little bit of crunch. I'm not terribly worried about it. It's better than it was before we put it back in the oven. But the flavor is really good. That thyme really comes through. It's very creamy. Um, not a lot of salt either. I thought maybe with the uh, look, y'all, I'm already trying to go back for seconds when I need to let it sit. <laughs> um, I thought maybe with the chicken base and the cream and everything in it that it might be a little bit too heavy, a little bit too rich, but it's not. It's really good, and I think if you do it this way, kind of casserole style, it feels more appropriate to the cream and everything. But overall, so far, a win. Once we get it plated up next to our chicken and um, all of our dinner, I'll leave y'all little information in the comments to see if tastes have changed or if opinions have changed. But something different for us to use our spaghetti squash for, and we'll probably do it again soon. Well, this fall, once squash comes back in the season and everything. But thank y'all for joining us and trying out this new recipe with us. If you want to see more of our content, just click the little box that you see on the screen and um, it'll take you to the next video or it'll take you, if you click on my picture, it'll take you to our, um, our YouTube page so that you can subscribe and get the notifications so that every time we post, you'll be notified. But thank y'all for joining us and we'll see y'all next time. Bye.